now another example of a discrete uh, time Markov chain. So, this is our famous So, all of us know the started aloha protocol, you know how it works. The performance question is what is the average throughput utilization of this aloha channel, started aloha channel, or what is the fraction of time, or what is the probability of success in each slot, because there are several users competing. So, what is the probability of success in a given slot, right? That is what you would like to know. And what is that? What is the probability of success in a slot? What is the maximum throughput in slot of the 0.36, right? So how did we derive that? The Poisson heuristic, right? So that is one way of doing that. So one can. That is a very. It's um, there are a lot of approximations there, right? Um, with the Poisson model, okay. We'll look at the Poisson model first to give us where this thing came, right? I, I did I derive that already before? G e minus G. It's okay. The base, the simple derivation, which is uh, sort of a gross derivation, right, says that the number of packets, right, transmitted per slot. Okay. So at each slot, I am trying to calculate. I am trying to estimate the number of packets, right, transmitted on a given slot. Now, if you look at a real system, right? Let's say there are ten users. Out of that, four users might have tried to send a packet in the previous slots, and uh, they ended up having collisions. So these are so-called backlogged users who already have a packet to send, and because of collision, right? They are going to retry in this given slot. So that is one kind of user. The other kind of user is who did not send a packet earlier on, but suddenly has a new packet in this given slot. So in a given slot, I have so backlogged users and unbacklogged users or non-backlogged users. And the both of them will try to send their packets together, and I need to. I will be successful only if exactly one of them sends it, right? Because of this probability, right? There is some back of probability, right? Then, and if it's a new user, you always send it probability one, right? So, in a given slot, if I can have some way to model the distribution for the number of packets transmitted in a slot, then I can do some right computations based on that. Okay, so. The number of packets depend upon depends upon these two users, the respective probabilities of you know retransmitting in a given slot and so on. So we just you know the early assumptions that uh, Abramson and the others used is that we simply presume that this is represented by a Poisson process. That the number of transmissions per slot right, so is actually a Poisson variable in a given slot. It's a variable, right? It's a Poisson variable. With some parameter g. This is so g is basically the offered load in one slot, right? In packets per second, it can be from zero up to infinity. Slightly, right? So g is basically the offered load per slot. Goes up to infinity, right? <coughs> so now tell me what is the probability of success in a given slot, which is basically utilization, right? So that means that exactly one packet has to be generated in this slot. I mean, simply using my slot length is one, right? So whatever the slot length is, so that's why it's slot fixed slot length, right? So the number of probability. So, probability of exactly one packet transmitted in a slot is what? P into P into one minus P to the power, and that is assuming geometry, right? This is a Poisson variable, right? 
So, for this Poisson variable, what is the probability of exactly one packet getting generated? Remember, it is e power minus lambda into lambda to the power i by i factor 8. In this case, i equals 1, right. So, therefore, this is simply my lambda is now g, g e power minus g, that is all, right. So, this is a Poisson variable, it is not you are not looking at the number of attempts. Or you could also think about it as a binomial variable too, but binomial in the long right when n and n p equal is very small, then it becomes a Poisson variable, the product of number of tri trials, right. So each user is trying with some probability p, and if n is very large and p is very small, then your binomial becomes essentially a Poisson, okay. So the probability of one packet, therefore, this is simply your throughput. So, the throughput of slaughter allow is simply g into e power minus g, okay. So, if you were to plot this, what will it look like? So, this is g and this is my throughput which is nothing but g e power. So, when g goes to 0, throughput is 0, it has to be right, there is no offer load therefore, there is no. So, as it increase, so this will increase right g power minus g if you plot will increase and at what point will it maximize 1 how do you determine that how do you mathematically show that it will maximize right differentiate with respect to yeah. so if i call this s so if i said ds by d0 dg equals 0 so this will be achieved at g equals 1 Therefore, S max is so as G increases, then and actually it goes to zero. So I'll just draw my so it ends up going to zero, right? So at G equals one, you achieve. So this is one way of getting a right asymptotic understanding of behavior of the system. And ideally you should never operate close to 1 because system will become unstable. A lot of approximations in this model right because it does not really capture the retransmission probability right back of probability retransmission probability none of that is getting captured in this model. It gives you right a very very high level view of what could be the maximum you actually run this from a simulation you will find that point you sometimes get 0.42 right even as high as 0.42. So, this 0.36 is simply because of the fact that pretending that it is a Poisson variable, but it is not right. So, we want to say refine this model let us be little more realistic okay and um, let us try to look at you know, so that is what this next model is. So, when we got to go to a slightly more realistic model it is more complex, but we can start adding more parameters. So, in this case there is no other parameter at all I cannot specify the rate of arrival for a particular process unbacklogged users the probability of transmission of retransmission for a backlogged user none of those are specified. Assuming I want to have a finer model then that is where our next uh, approach comes in okay. So, questions on this uh, basic model. What transmission in a slot? Suppose yeah. I wanted to calculate the probability that there is no transmission in a slot. How can I do it using this Poisson distribution? If you want to calculate, that is simply the channel is idle. So what we want to know is, in uh, uh, what fraction of time or what fraction of slots was there a successful transmission? So if you want to calculate, uh, it will be simply uh, probability of uh, x equal zero is what e power minus g, right? Because your lambda to the power zero goes to one, i factorial goes to zero, factorial goes to one. Simply g. So, offer load you are to put in a zero. I'm sorry. Offer load you are taking. No, no. <laughs> or whatever be the offer load, even see if your parameter is lambda, right, or g. So g is the average number of uh, packets arriving at a given at a given time slot. So there is a probability of no packets arriving in a given slot time slot is simply e power minus g. Right. Okay, so now for a little bit more complex model with 
Markov chains. Now that we have seen Markov chains, everything is a Markov chain, right? Yeah. Why can't we do binomial distribution in this? There. In this. Binomial is essentially what they are uh, will converge to Poisson. So you are saying if you are saying that I have n users, right? And each of them has a probability of generating a packet p. So the average number of packets generated is n p, right? So you would say the probability of n p is, is so much. We will do that binomial expression, right? Yes, but that in the very in um, we we'll look at that example next of how binomial is going to be actually useful, right? Here n is very large that it doesn't make sense to do that. It essentially converges to a Poisson process, okay? And the proof for that is in Trivedi's book. By the way, if you want to see why it converges to Poisson? It's there, right? Okay, so now our Markov chain based slaughter Lauka model. Okay, so let there be M users sharing a channel. Okay, this is so m is the input, and a couple of other probabilities are also given as input. So we are trying to model the system behavior. So one way to model the system behavior is look at the number of backlogged users. So user is backlogged if the user has a packet to send in the next slot. That's the definition of backlogged user, right? And unbacklogged user is someone that does not have a packet to send at all. So the queue is empty. That's about it. Just look at one queue, right? One packet stored in every user's queue. If the queue is empty, you are not backlogged. If the queue is not empty, you are backlogged. Okay. So a not backlogged user has some probability. You know, uh, we call that what A or B. Yeah, A. Okay. So a non-backlogged user has a probability A of getting a new packet in the next slot. That is like your geometric distribution, right? You are tossing a coin. Sorry, not geometric. It's a Bernoulli trial there, right? So you are with the probability A. You are going to generate a packet in a given slot, in the next slot. And one minus a, you won't generate a packet. This is true for all the users in the system. Then the backlogged user who has a packet to send. So the way start all her works is the first time you get a packet, you simply send it, right? You don't really wait for anything. You don't wait for accessing on it. But once you get collision, you go into a back off mode. So in the back off mode, with some probability b, you will try to retransmit the packet in every subsequent slot. Only then allow will work, right? Otherwise, what happens if uh, two users try to send in the same channel, then both of them collide. The subsequent channel, both of them cannot try to send again. They have to do some. They have to compute some probability or define some probability b with which we'll try to send. If b is very small, what happens? Then geometry comes in, right? By the time you try sending a packet, you will keep on wait, 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 right? So one over b will be the average number of slots that you end up waiting, right? Before you send the packet, we keep b very small. The waiting time becomes large. If you keep b very large, then what happens? If you keep b as 0.75, then the collision probability will become very high, right? So there, anyway, there's a trade-off. So this will help us analyze the trade-off. So given the probability, this is what we will define, right? So there are uh, m user sharing of which n, right? Users are Backlogged and m minus n are not backlogged. Okay, so then let a be the probability. With which a non-backlogged user will transmit in a given slot. So this A effectively effectively captures the packet generation rate. If A is very large, it means that in every slot you're going to generate a packet. In which case, Allah will simply collapse. So A is usually small. 
So, this is probability of uh, any node generating a packet new packet in a given slot. Ah, coming to it, so that is A then B right is the probability in which a backlog user will send. So, backlog user it is not generation of a packet, it is retransmission of a packet right that is a difference. You can yeah, but we would like to vary that because B is different from A because A is strictly dependent upon the load of the system whereas, B is a controllable parameter. See, Users are getting backlogged. How can we vary their packet generation rate? Your A is let us say fixed. You start the system specifying M and A. B is a parameter that lets you control the operation of the system. If a, like I said, B is very large, then your retransmission rate is probably so high you will end up creating more and more collisions. Nobody will ever get through. So, B is something you would like to find the optimal value for, right? A is something you cannot control. Your system is generating, you have put 100 users. A is whatever the users rate at which they generate traffic, there is not really controllable parameter right, it is a variable parameter but not a controllable one whereas, B is controllable, you choose B which gives you the best performance ok. So, that is why B is a defined as a different probability. So, given A, B and M right, what is the prob what is the throughput of the system. So, B is the probability. Yes, that will make it even more complex. If the load is light, actually B can be dynamic. If the load is light, you can have more aggressive policy with respect to that, right? And yes, you can make it be independent of everyone. That is also possible because if you look at really, if you look at Ethernet, for example, your binary backoff, right? Um, where as if I observe more collisions. I reduce my right, my, I will keep on reducing B equals B by 2 and so on. Right. So, that is your exponential back off that you try to do and yes it will be different for different users which is little bit that is why we go to simulation right. When I want to really do that kind of uh, intricate this would not be able I can but it gets more complex right. So, here for now we are simply assuming that all of them have the same uh, retransmission probability B and that does not change. No, A can be anything, A can be point 0.1, point 0.2, that is the load on the system. If I am saying that I will generate, right, with probability 0.2, I will generate a packet in every slot, that is the load. So, a non um, blocked user, backlog, backlog user, that is the new user he has just generated, he starts off uh, with the. No, user will, let us say, user, user will go between these two states, you will be backlogged, your packet, packet goes through, then you become non backlogged. Non so, or it can be bad, but of course, we are not yet looking at the queuing implications here. So, if you look at it really a queue right, then what happens is the user successful in the next slot, he will continue to be a backlog user. I am not going there yet. Let us assume there is only one packet per queue for every user and once you finish it, you have to wait before the, before the next packet is generated right. There is no queuing as such here. So, this is where some of the you know, the uh, as you see uh, as you want add more and more reality the model gets more and more complex we are making a lot of assumptions here right i only have space to store one packet at a user that's all i generate a packet and i am trying to send it yeah i am not generating any more packets right so maybe that held at a higher layer just pretend that ip layer is holding it in its buffer there is no room in your mac right if your mac card only has uh, buffer for one packet that's all it cannot send any more packets right it's held somewhere else okay are these basic definitions uh, clear right. Okay. Now, to represent the state of the system I simply use the value n the number of backlog users right and then based on this we will try to find out the probability of successful transmission and so on ok. okay. So, the book has used this you know a b little bit uh, without any mnemonics associated. So, let a right. So, A i n now your binomial is here ok that you wanted. So, this is the probability that 
exactly i non backlogged users So, given the state system or the state is n, given that there are n backlogged users, out of the m minus n backlogged users, i of them are going to transmit a packet. So, what is that problem? I am sorry? We should also model n. n is what is being modeled. m is an input, total number of users is an input, out of which n is the current set of backlogged users, where n can go from 0 to m. So, only, only, n, is, yeah, only n is getting modeled. So, the state of the system is simply n the number of backlogged users. Yeah, that depends on uh, whether the packet uh, was transmitted uh, correctly or not, right? Yes, yeah. So, a backlogged user can stay as a backlogged user in the next log too. So, here I am only looking at the non backlogged users who do not have any packets to send. They are generating a new packet with this probability A that I mentioned, right? Only that is all the time. So, if you, so this is simply m minus n choose i. We will do A, right? So, the time varying is, is only the state, state is the number of backlogged users, that is the one that changes from time to time, from uh, between time slots. So, that is why n is the state of the system. So, this is uh, A i n, okay. everybody got that, go to the next slide. Then now let us look at the backlog user, the same right philosophy. So, this is the probability that exactly i backlogged users right, retransmit. And that is again n choose i. We divided or defined b as the probability of uh, retransmission. So, 1 minus b n minus i, i goes from Okay, these are still now definitions. Now let us so let right n represent the the process state. So I'll start off with when the system starts. How many backlog users will be there? What is the value of n? Zero. Nobody is backlog. So zero is the starting state initial state and then I can go up to m backlog users, right. So, my system states are simply this 1, 2 and so on. Okay. So, now I have to define my transition probabilities. What is the probability that I given in some state n, right. I will go to state n plus 1, n plus 2 or n minus 1, n minus 2 and so on. So, now what is the probability that given I am in some state n, I will remain in the same state n in the next slot. So, beginning of the slot, I had n backlog, end of the slot, I still have n backlog. So, what is the probability for that? Sir, uh, one non backlog user. One backlog user or one uh, non backlog user. If one backlog user transmits, then it goes to n minus 1. <laughs> so, all the n backlog users did not send, right. 
and only on non backlogized center packets. So, what is the probability for that? We know in terms of A and B, right. So, this is A 1 n right. This is the probability that exactly assume that everybody is independent right. So, this is a otherwise without independence it is tough to do all this. So, assuming that all users are independent is where that binomial also comes from right. So, this is exactly one non backlogged user sending and I do not want any Backlogged user with the center. Oh, sorry, no, I am writing the wrong expression. Sorry, this is to go from, okay. Sorry, this is B. Why am I looking for an eraser? Eraser is here. Right? <coughs> No, I mean I'm starting in state n. I don't want any of the backlogged users to have sent, and I want hmm, to end up in state and to remain in state n. I have only one unbacklogged guy who has sent, who has successfully sent the packet. How many users are there M. Yeah. It should be a of one comma m minus n into b of zero comma n. No, no, no. I have represented a of one as if you remember the definition. N is captured in the formula there. It's m minus n. A i n is defined as m minus n choose i. It's not a i m minus n, right? Ah, yeah. Okay. Plus, nobody sends a packet. No new user yes. has generated a packet. And no backlog user has tried to send, right? If no new user generates a packet and nobody who is backlogged is also tried to send right or sorry no 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 no, no. more than one user has sent right so there are two there are two cases okay okay so let us uh, look at this one so first is no non backlogged user has sent a packet right into if exactly one backlogged user has tried to send State would have gone to n minus one. Whereas if nobody has tried, or if more than one person has tried, what happens? Collision. If nobody has tried, nothing has happened. If more than one backlog user tries, what do you have? Collision, right? So I simply want to. This is multiplied by one minus b comma one comma right? Makes sense. So only one backlog user has tried, or sorry. Opposite of <laughs> negate that, right? It is not the case that only one backlog user has tried. Uh, therefore, the backlog guys stay put, and there is no new generation from any of the unbacklog guys. So there is a probability of staying in state n. These are the two cases. Okay. If you are not able to get this right away, if you go back and spend five minutes on it, you should be able to, right? Then what's the probability of going? P n comma n plus one. So to go from n users to n plus one backlog users, what's the probability? One minus a one n into b zero. One minus a one n. A one n. One two minus a one n. That means um, nobody has tried to send or more than one, the same probability or trend. No, you will go to state n plus one. One, if there is a new user, right? To get a backlogged user, you have to have one unbacklogged guy trying to send a packet, right? Exactly one. So that is basically a one n and. At least one backlog guy has tried to send because you have collision. For collision, you need two guys to send. One is the unbacklog guy, one is the backlog guy, right? So backlog guy is captured by one minus uh, at least one backlogged user has to send, right? So more than zero, and there has to be at least one new 
generated from the unbacklog fellows. So, that is your P n comma n plus 1. Okay. And then for P, to go from state n to state n minus 1, so how will I, there should be, there should be no new non backlog transmissions and exactly one backlog transmission, right. So, therefore, it is A. 0 n which means nobody from the unbacklog group has tried and exactly one backlog user has tried okay so that's so these are the three special cases n from plus 1 minus 1 and staying in n but you can also go from n to n plus i right yeah so if you have n to n Will there not be one more case where more than one non backlog user tries to transmit at the same time? Yeah, that is what is kept by 1 minus V1, right? So, non backlog users. No. Oh. So, I am saying. Non backlog, so if you are talking of two backlog users, A2, two, two, two so non backlog. Uh -huh. So, in that case, also. You will go to n plus 2 then. You will not stay in n plus 1. You will go to n plus 2. That is the next one that we are trying to do. To go to n plus 1, you need exactly one backlog user. If I go to n plus 2, right, that means does not matter whether the unback the backlog guys tried or not, as long as I have two non backlog guys trying to send, then they all become backlogged, right. So, to go from here to here, it is simply A of i, comma n, does not matter whether the backlog guys send it or not, all others simply add up to 1, right. The backlog guys could have sent, could not have sent, I have collision, and you have two guys sending, where your i is greater than 2 or greater than equal to 2 right. <coughs> so, as long as any two one backlog guys try the rest of what the backlog guys do is irrelevant to our probability. So, simply a or i of n right. So, there are i unbacklog guys trying to send they will all end up with colliding and therefore, end up with collision and uh, so, now this pretty much gives us the, so now you define this set of transition probabilities, okay. Questions on this so far. So, if I give you n and I give you a and b, simply you will write this large matrix, write a program to do that, you can do that in MATLAB or whatever it is, right, to generate the values, right, all this probability you will get your p, right. Then you can simply solve that v equals v p and then if you, if the steady state exists, then you will get the value for v, then you can get the probability that the system will be in a steady, in steady state, what the probability will be in state with 0 users, 1 users, 2 users, 3 users and so on and then it will sum all these things should sum up to so sum up to 1, right. So, the reason we are computing all this p is to fill up our probability matrix, right, our transition probability matrix p, use that to solve for v. Once I solve for v, okay, then I can compute the throughput of the system which we have not yet talked about. Okay. So, before that let us go back to this diagram here. So, from 0, so 0 is a special case, right, state 0. Will there be a transition from state 0 to state 1? Can you go from 0 backlog to 1 backlog? No, because in that case transmission will happen if yeah. there is only one person. I will never go to 1 backlog, right. I can go from 0 backlog to 0 backlog I can go. This is my P 0 comma 0, which is captured by this one, right. <laughs> there is only one user, everybody is unbacklogged. So, there is only one guy who tries to send, that guy is successful, therefore, I stay in this state. If more than one backlog, unbacklogged user tries to send, then I will simply jump to state 2, state 3, and so on, right. But I never go to, so that is the only special case, right. P01 is basically 0, you can also try that here, right. <coughs> when uh, p 0 right. So, this is a 1 comma 0 right which will be um, yeah. 
you can figure it out it will end up going to 0 because b 0 comma 0 is going to be 0. So, 1 minus that is 0. So, whatever is this right. So, therefore, p 1 0 comma 1 is 0. So, you do not have to really think about it you simply code this mindlessly you will get all the probabilities that you want. And from 1 what are the states I can go to for 1 backlogged user I can come to 1 backlogged user will I ever have 1 backlogged user you can right because from 2 I can come to 1 right because 2 backlogged one of them succeeds I come back to 1 backlogged user and from 2 I can go to 3 4 and so on right. So, these self loops are all there. So, this is after that everything is kind of you know fairly routine and uh, again from 1 I can go to 3 right. So, there is a lot of this fair it looks pretty ugly, but uh, from 1 I can go to 2 I can go to 3 whatever it is I can go to right and but from 1 can I come back to 1. From one backlog and come back to one backlog. Yes. 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 Either this backlog guy did not try at all, and the new and that's about it, right? The only backlog I never tried, or there was this guy did not try, and there was a new user that tried to send anyway, right? So I might end up staying here. Either there is no new packet generation, or there is packet generation and the guy succeeded. If both of these happen, then I will end up in state two. Right, if this backlog guy transmitted and the unbacklog guy also transmitted, I will end up in going to state 2 because there is a collision. So, therefore, this self loop is okay and so on. Okay. So, now we have we can compute our steady state uh, probabilities of being in each of those states. So, the question is so what? What do I do with that steady state probabilities now? How can I compute the throughput? We did the simple analysis for throughput, right, with the g equals minus g. So, here how do I define how do we calculate the throughput. So, we have to go one step further and use these. So, in every system you have to figure out how to compute the relevant performance metrics using this steady state probability. So, Markov chain will stop at this point you have the generic framework for doing this, but then you will have to interpret uh, how do how do you represent the metric that you want in terms of these probabilities that is where extra thinking is needed. So, now in this system how will I define my throughput of the system. Number, uh, of number of bits uh, yes. So, seconds. here throughput is simply the fraction of uh, slots which are successful. So, if I have n users, right, what is the probability that if I have n users, I will have a successful transmission, right. So, this is a notion of a reward. So, for every state, we establish a reward. So, in, ge in general, this R n is some reward. And we define the reward in terms of probability of a successful transmission when system is in state n. So, what is that probability? What is the probability of successful transmission when you are in state n? Either there is no new transmission from the unbacklogged side, and there is exactly one transmission from the backlogged side, or So, you define R n to be this, this is the fraction this is the probability of one successful transmission when you are in system state n, this is the reward that you right. So, this is like computing f of x. So, you know the distribution of being in the different states right that is your x variable then we compute f of x. So, this is basically R n. So, you are throughput of the system is therefore, overall probability of successful transmission is summation over all the states going from 0 to m r n into v n, where we have to solve
it depends on the values of a and b if a is very large then you will be always stuck at the other side of the system and your probability of successful transmission will be very easy, will be you know uh, you might never leave that system, that uh, state m at all if a is 1 b is 1 right everybody is going to send and uh, you end up having collisions always right hmm? no, no, steady state is you start the system right so there are 100 users everybody is generating packet right initially there will be some settling down period then beyond a time when none of the packet rates change and your the retransmit probabilities are also fixed right then you will end up with a system where there is always somebody trying to set somebody right succeeding somebody not succeeding and so on so your system will enter a st uh, your so called steady state where the there is no long term change in behavior of the system as such make sense if we have to calculate v n in this case how will you calculate that but you know the matrix p yes. right the matrix p is what all those p of n that we computed are for so you have that matrix p then simply solve v equals v p with that set of linear equations that we saw before right so with the simply take that to be this uh, this is what right this is the one we talked about earlier solve for this when you solve if the solution exists you will get the values for the probability of being in state with uh, you know two users three users four users and so on from that if you define your rn accordingly you will get your average value of the system okay. what i understand is steady state after this it cannot accommodate more users that is the maximum throughput or something like that is achieved no. the system is has a fixed number of users right and Okay, so this is what if you if you keep your a to be very small, right? Then your throughput will also be proportionately roughly in m into a, right? Where m is the number of users and the probability of generation is m into a is what you will. When the system load is fairly light, right? And the system load is very large, then you'll end up your with throughput going to this other. Way. If you plot this with respect to a, a is your you know, fixed parameter. B is let's say fixed to 0.001 or 0 0.05 or something like that. So if you really want to understand the behavior of the system, right? So your m and a are fixed. So given m and sorry, uh, b, right? Let's say I'm fixing this to be 50 users, fixing this to be point, you know, zero 0.05, something like that, right? Some number that I'm choosing. Then I vary. A is the load of the system. A is the fraction or probability with which I will generate a packet in every slot, right? And then I'm computing my uh, s, the throughput of the system, right? So with varying a and with the for given m, you will see something like this, where the throughput increases and then starts decreasing only difference is this is a far more accurate representation of the system behavior compared to what the poison array will try to show so you might find that for because it depends on this value of b also b is hidden in that particular case m is also not taken into consideration you will get a similar curve like this right so what steady state means is if i look at the sort of probabilistic behavior of the system at time say 1 million units and look at time 2 2 million units the probabilities will not change right of being in any of these different states that will still essentially converge to that value if such a thing exists okay. so that is independent of the number of users and the for a given set of users it will depend on the value of a see if I say 50 users are there then my a should be small enough right so that the collective load is a into m yeah. that is what g is calculated representing there right so the a will dictate the steady state region i mean in terms of the the throughput as such, your value of s will depend upon a, but as to whether you have what time you will enter steady state is what you are asking about. No, I am talking about the, uh, the steady state, achieving the steady state is independent of the number of users. Is it? Sure. So, you are for, no, for a given a set of say, users, no, I am looking at users, uh -huh. and then after some time you have reached to a steady state and you have addition of the users, addition of the users. Our number of users is fixed in the system, huh. right. So, for a given set of users. For a given uh, packet generation rate, you are you are reaching steady state. If you change the number of users, it's a different system and altogether. Then again, you have to do all this. Yeah, if I change my value of m, I have to come back and recompute my because my matrix system is now m plus m, m plus one by m plus one, right? Therefore, that will change. So, so how do I come to my when you say if it if it exists? Ah, that's why that condition that we said before. One, it is you should be able to go from right this irreducible condition and so on, right? So if you are able to solve for that and you get those values then you have you know that it is it is existing okay uh, in this particular case 
the see if your values of a and b will dictate whether you end up completely staying in one side of the system right if your a is very small and then b is does not matter to the system at all you will be mostly in a non backlogged state right if a is a point n to the power minus 5 most of the times you will have no packets your throughput will also be very low right you will be simply a into m that is all right. so that is so in that case in theory you will be able to go to the other states but you never end up going there which does not really matter no the, the case is where we have um, okay in theory you can go from one state to the other right um, in this particular scenario yeah if a approaches if a equals 1 then what will happen you will end up with uh, being in state m all the time but you can always there is a probability of coming back to right there is a slightly non zero probability of coming back to the lower state but you mostly end up being in state m so your steady state will be simply 0 0 0 0 and then 1 right for being in state m in which case the probability of successful transmission to m users is again negligibly small right you will never be able to succeed so you'll so it will always be end up being close to zero your reward for that will be pretty much close to zero so your effective throughput will be zero okay so i guess this is no past no this is not complete right everybody wants to know okay what is the throughput right well that is our homework right so if one homework i'll put it formally on the web is okay we'll take a small Right, 10 user system set these values of a and b you generate a small 10 by 10 matrix solve it find out what the steady state throughput probabilities are and then from that you can right compute the effective throughput of the system and that is no big deal so you can either solve it yourself manually by hand right or get one of this software that lets you that does it for you right or try to learn matlab so these things are sort of incidental that they expect that you will <laughs> learn on the site right <laughs> it does not take that much time to figure out how to you know enter a system of equations uh, in a system and then look for the result right are you planning on using router interfaces also yes that is what is coming next right so this is i'm still building up the base case for markov we were queuing i i will be getting into queuing um, after this right so okay so that is another example of how we can use this markov chain representation for two model system behavior okay okay so then there is a special case of this markov chains of this discrete uh, in general markov chains what is called as your birth death process okay so we are still in discrete time So, in the previous example was aloha we saw where from state n I can go to n plus 1, n plus 2 and so on right. So, that is fairly complicated, but there are some special systems where the transitions right are only to your nearest neighbors. So, it is effectively birth. So, if you are in a state i, then if there is a quote unquote birth, then you go to state i plus 1, right. And there is only probability of one such birth happening in a given state. More than that is simply not allowed as per a definition, right. So, from there is a probability. So, b i represents the probability of a birth occurring in state i, right. So, And again, if I am in a state i, then the probability of a death occurring is represented as d i when the state will move from i system will move from state i to state i minus 1. So, b i d i and then this will be i greater than or equal to 1 or there is also a i which is as is. So, you can also continue to same in this stay in the same state. So, for every state i we define this probability right. And of course, okay. 
all these three should sum up to 1, right. There is therefore, there is no other transition possible. The state i will go to either i plus 1 or i minus 1 or stay in the same state. Yeah, so this can be used to model a queuing system a discrete in a discrete time manner. We will also use continuous state, uh, continuous time representation also is possible. Okay. So, in this case, yes, if I keep my delta t to be very small, so the number of packets arriving in uh, num more than one packet arriving in this very small time interval is negligible, that is what this would represent. Right. So, <coughs> so, my transition matrix will look something like this. So, that is how the matrix looks like and pictorially this looks like this. So, this is birth 1, this is probability is depth 1, this is staying in the same state. So, this is a special case and why this is special is there is a closed form solution that you can simply apply. You do not have to go and try to solve linear equations from scratch whereas, for a general process like we saw in the Aloha case you have to you know, feed in these values and run it in a, uh, the, the system that will give you the solution for the set of equations. Here it is easy to find closed form solutions right. So, therefore, if you know that, that a particular process is birth death you simply go and apply the set of results from this particular thing. So, from you can derive this. So, from I am not going to go through the derivation because that is fairly you know, straight, straightforward derivation. not be it. because V a has definition for V not in there. I thought they will be lazy and skip the definition, but no. So, that is the expression. We will work out an example in the tutorial session on Friday to see what the impact are. But in general, all you need to know is here is a system, here is I know that this is birth death, then you have to know that solutions, closed form solutions for that exist, and I can use it 
as it is very convenient to us. Okay. All right. Two more minutes, and then we will stop. Yeah. Yeah. B j minus one divided by d j. Yeah. We can. Check that I didn't make any mistake. Okay. So the last two minutes on this topic before we go to continuous time Markov chains. So, what is the average time spent in a given state i in a discrete time Markov chain? Average time. So, I am in a state i, right. I will leave the state and go to some other state. I will stay in the same state with probability p i i, right. Then this is every time instant, right. So, what is the number of time instants I will spend in state i in a given discrete uh, DTM state? Yeah. I know steady state probability of staying in state i is known, but what is the time that you will spend? So, if you were to imagine this as a simulation that is running, right. So, you were right, you, I, I have the code for that, I will probably put it on the web, I do not I don't know how to display it on this one or maybe in the uh, laptop session I will try to show that, right. You can actually very easily write a simple Markov chain simulator, right. It takes about less than you know, 10 pages of code, the same the 2 by 2 example that I showed, it is very simple to do, right. All you have is you have uh, basically what will happen is in every, you start with the system in some state, right, 0 or 1 by flip of a coin p. Then you simply loop for i equals right whatever <coughs> 1 million steps, 10 million steps. In each step, you are de depending on the state. If state equals i, then you know the probability of transitioning, right? You know your single step transition probability, right? Simply flip a co uh, coin and again decide whether to go to state 0 or state 1 based on the probability that is defined. And then just repeat this forever. And then you will get, you will see the sequence of state changes as the system is going along, right? So if you look at it, you will be in state 0, then you will be in state 0, state 0, state 0, finally you will go to state 1, then state 1, state 1, state 1, like series of zeros and 1s is what you will see, right. So, what is the length of that 0 of being in a particular state, number of steps that you spent in a given state? No, 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 continuous number, at the given instant, yeah, at for a once you start in a given state 0, how long will you stay in that state 0 before you go to state 1? It will be a sigma i p of uh, incoming into p of staying there i minus 1 times and p of sigma outgoing. Yeah. So, what, so that is a geometric variable, right? Yeah. right? So, this is a geometric variable, right? If I look at once I enter a state i, then that the time spent in that state is a geometric variable and finally, at the end of that I will go to the next state, right? Any other state, I have, I will go to some other state. So, that is what I have here, right. So, therefore, the expected time spent in T i, this is my probability of success, right. I am simply tossing a coin in every unit, time unit with probability P i i, I stay, which is failure. 1 minus P i i, I leave the state, which is success. So, therefore, 1 over the probability of success, which is 1 by. So, this is a geometric variable. So, that is where this Markovian, I said earlier on, right, geometric variable is Markovian. So, this is why the time spent is basically Markovian. So, this is that Markovian property of So, the number of time units spent is a geometric variable, geometric random variable. When we go to continuous time, 
the time spent in each state is Markovian because time spent is exponential right. So, that is the parallel between the discrete and the continuous one. So, this is I have to define T i. T i is the number of time units spent in state i. So, for the discrete time uh, birth death process we will see example, but when you go to continuous time our m m 1 is automatically a continuous time model. We can model m m 1 is both discrete time as well as continuous time. If you look at uh, the traditional textbooks will use this m m 1 as a continuous time Markov chain. If you look at this one old book by Burstekas and Gallagher there they deliberately model the q as a discrete time Markov chain right and then, then try to you get the same set of results, but the derivation is slightly different. So, we will come back on Friday and then go through that. Questions before we close shop? No questions? Sir, here T i is i, it should also include the situation that you are entering uh, once you entered the state one, only at one. that time, right? Yeah, that is from the big from the time that you entered the state. How long is it before you leave? No, right? I'm, I'm surprised that it's the same, exactly the same as geometry. With geometry, we don't care what has happened. We say so it's in every we start state. Now, uh -huh. How many flips will be say? How before many ice will ha happen yeah. after this? Yeah. Number of but failures. Yeah. Here, T i equal to i means that you enter it, then you spend i, and then come out something like that, right? You, once you have entered the state, uh -huh. right? You stay in the state with probability p i i and leave the state with probability one minus p i. I. That's where the geometric nature comes, right? So since I'm doing this for every time instead. That becomes a job. the time spent becomes a, the number of time units spent is a geometric variable, right? So, could you explain the steady state uh, matrix for the birth death process once again? No. This one, right? So this is the transition, right? The, the transitions probability. are okay. So, how so, do we so from state zero, I will go to state zero with probability a naught. I go to state one, state two, and state. And from state one, I will go to state zero with probability d one. So it has to be a row wise, right? Column wise, right now. And then um, I'll stay in the same state with probability a one. When I go, if there is a new process or new birth. Then I go to state two. So this is your basic term. And then there is repeated for all the states, right? So each row has only three entries, and they are up to one. And all the other entries are zero because you never go to any other state. Only your immediate neighboring states or yourself is the only one that you go to, right? So this is the one-step transition probability, right? So at an any point in time, you can only go from this state to the next state. So then we go back to if you can solve, right? So if you solve this uh, v equals vp with that, you will end up with this set of equations. So this is your this is steady state will be this one, right? We will go through an example of this in the tutorial class, right? Because I want to go to CTMCs and then uh, start looking at queuing models right after that. Okay, there are no further questions. Then we'll see you on Friday.